we're back in R. And what we're going to do now is we're going to explore together those first two steps in the decomposition process, the extraction of the trend and then removing the, that long-term trend from the rest of the data so we can start to isolate these different scales in our data set. We'll start first by applying a moving average to our data. So we'll start by loading the forecast package, which I had you install today by doing library forecast. We'll run this. Uh, this forecasting package is a useful bundle of time series based forecasting approaches. And one of the functions that come loaded with this package is a moving average function. I'm going to start by creating a name to store this, and I'm going to call it MA underscore M13, and that's for moving average for a model of a window of order 13. And then I'm going to make sure that we're calling from the forecast package using the MA function, and then I'm going to give it our time series object, ndbi.ts. What I have to do then is tell it the window size or the order that I want the moving average to be calculated or over, and that in this case will be 13. For an order size of 13, what we're asking it to do is take every observation and take the six values before and the six values after and average all of that to get a kind of weighted average for each observation in our data set. For this, we're also gonna tell it center equals true. You can have these moving averages be unbalanced, and there are times when you might want that, but this is not one of them. So let's run that. Looks like it ran. And now let's look at what got generated. First, I'm going to expand my plot window so it's easier for you to see what I'm generating. I'm going to go ahead and plot my NDDI.time series. I'm going to run that. And then on top of that, I'm going to add the moving average that was generated using that function. I'm going to do that by calling the lines argument and giving it the variable name where I stored all that information that was generated by the moving object. And I'm going to color this blue so that it uh, stands out a little bit. And I'm going to give it a line with the three to help it pop. And now you can see that moving average that has been generated being laid over top of the raw data. And so what you can see is this effect of that dampening of these seasonal signals. So a, a, if a month is particularly high, but the months around it aren't, it will lower that value, smoothing over this jagged month-to-month -month variation so that you can see more of the general trends over time as that NDVI is changing. You can also see where the, that the blue line starts and stops before the data ends. And that, again, is because of this window size. We chose a fairly big window size of 13, in part because what I wanted to do was get uh, almost an annual scale average of what that NDVI was, really smoothing out over that seasonal signal. But what that means is it really truncates those two ends. And if you have a short time series, that can be a real problem because you can be left with very little of your time series left if you have to cut off big chunks at the beginning of the year.